305 himself, <laughs> Mr. Bobby Blanco. <laughs> I don't know about 305, 301. I'm from the Silver Spring, so it's, I like Miami, but not that much, Savannah. <laughs> okay, fine. Mr. 301 himself, Bobby Blanco, everybody. <laughs> Bobby, how is Miami so far? So far, so good. You know, I think the Nationals enjoyed their off day here yesterday, kind of put this weekend behind them and get ready for these two games against the Marlins. Well, and it was the tale of two Nationals teams on this last homestand, so you kind of hope that they went back to how they played versus the Yankees. They played really well. The young guys were playing great. And then versus the Cubs, it kind of slipped, and you actually saw the youth in the way that you don't want to. Not the promise, but, oh, yeah, these guys are brand new to all of this, and they're still learning. Yeah, the homestand started off so exciting, right? I mean, Dylan Cruz comes up, makes his debut, hits his first home run off Garrett Cole. The Nats take two of three against the Yankees, who are leading the American League um, right now. So that was, you know, so much fun, those three nights at, at Nationals Park. And then you have an off day Thursday. You come in, you face the Red Hot Cubs. Like we knew coming into that series, the Cubs were one of the hotter teams in the league right there, so you have to play tough. Friday night, Dylan hits another home run. That's cool. They have a late inning rally. Kind of falls up short. All right, you still got two more to play, but then the sloppy play kind of started, and, you know, we saw them be very young. A lot of mistakes in the field. You mentioned how many errors there were. There were probably at least two or three more that should have been called errors. Um, and, you know, Davey Martinez talked about it a little bit before the game today. He looked back and watched Sunday's game, especially that blowout loss to the Cubs. And, you know, it's like, you know, a lot of these are mental mistakes, which is a good thing, I think. I think you can fix mental mistakes as opposed to them being physical where guys are in the wrong position or guys just don't have the physical ability to do something. Mental mistakes, I think you can fix. And, you know, this is a young team. There was a lineup that they put out there. Everyone was 26 years or younger. And so you got guys like Dylan Cruz, James Wood, who we know are going to be part of the long term future for this team. But then you also have guys like Jose Tana, Andres Chaparro, Darren Baker when he plays, Drew Millis, who are trying to prove themselves. They're trying to show that they can be a part of this long term uh, team's plan and, and, and hopefully that they're not putting too much pressure on themselves that can kind of slow down and have a strong finish of the season. One of the highlights from the latter half of the homestand against the Cubs was the rosters expanded. Darren Baker makes his major league debut. Dusty was in attendance. So 56 years later, after he had his first major league hit, he got to watch Darren have his own huge moment in his very first pitch, his first major league hit. Those are one of those days it doesn't matter what the score was. You just look and smile and go, this is what baseball is all about. Yeah, that was the highlight of Sunday's, you know, bad loss to the Cubs. But, uh, you know, as much as Dusty does play a role in this story because of who he is, uh, you know, this is about Darren, right? I mean, he was drafted twice by the Nationals, once out of high school, then again in the 10th round out of Cal to the team that his father managed the two division titles while he was in D.C., and then obviously they parted ways. And then Darren spends four years in the minor leagues. We thought he might have had a chance to come up and make his major league debut last year when the Nationals sent Luis Garcia Jr. down to the minors near the end of the season. They end up not calling Darren. He has to wait a whole nother year. Finally gets the call, makes a pinch hit appearance in the ninth inning of a blowout loss. And then the first pitch, I mean, we know all along that Darren can make contact. And sure enough, hits it right back up the middle for his first single. So that was very cool. And then Dusty, of course, just watching him in the stands, could not be more chill. Just relax. Mom's losing her mind. But Dusty is just like, oh, yeah, I've seen this before. <laughs> Right, that's the most Dusty Baker reaction to anything ever. We didn't expect anything else from him. Let's turn the tables here, though, to Patrick Corbin, tonight's starter. His last two outings, he's done really well, and not just by what we've now come to know as Patrick Corbin standards, but in Major League Baseball standards, he's won his last two outings. He's not allowing earned runs. I believe he has two earned runs in his last two outings. I mean, those are incredible numbers this past two times out. Yeah, he finally got that elusive 100th career win, and you wonder if just getting that monkey off his shoulder, off his back, was just kind of like a big sigh of relief for him. You know, doing it against the Rockies, that's 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 a good thing. That's that you know, I think that shows that he had a ex he executed his game plan, pitched well. I mean, that's not the toughest lineup out there. But then to do it against the Yankees, six shutout innings, that's more of like okay, and this is something we can kind of build on. He's done a lot better job of staying low in the zone, sequencing his pitches, which, of course, he did so well back in 2019 and just has not been able to do so far this past couple of years. Those two back-to-back -back outings, I mean, I'm not saying they're going to change how we think of Patrick Corbin um, in his time in D.C., but we all know the contract status. We all know heading into this offseason what it's probably going to look like for both of these parties. But if he can finish the season strong, I think both him and the Nationals can be happy with how this ends. 
Well, exactly. And you said it best of we think of 2019 Patrick Corbin and who Patrick Corbin is today. But it's so nice to see him hopefully ending this contract on such a high note. Let's actually take a listen. And Davey Martinez spoke on Patrick Corbin's legacy in D.C. Let's listen in. We don't win the World Series without him. You know, honestly, he was part of part of an unbelievable team and uh, he did a lot of great things for us. I asked him to do some tough things, you know, going into the bullpen and um, did it with no no quarrels and did it well. I mean, you know, game seven threw three innings for us. You know, the intentions were to send him out there one inning and see how he does. Um, remember having a conversation, you know, about he came out. I said, how you doing? He goes, good. Okay. I said, okay, you're going back out, you know. Next inning, everybody thought he was going to be done. I said, how you doing? He goes, I feel good. Okay, okay, you're going back out. <laughs> you know? And I was like, but, man, he was dealing, you know? And, uh, but that's, that's who he is. You know, he's always been that guy. You know, and people, people only see him every five days. I see him every day, and he's, he's totally in tune of everything that's going on. You know, he helps, he helps with the young players. Um, he's, always, he's always upbeat, you know? Um, I love the guy. I mean, we spent, you know, six years together, and I don't know what's going to happen after. But he's, uh, he's the reason why we got that trophy in the, in the Champions Club. It's so easy with recency bias to remember Patrick Corbin, the way he's been pitching, you know, recently. It hasn't been great. But when you remember the 2019 postseason, Davey said it, there is no World Series without Patrick Corbin. So it's hard, but Bobby, I'll toss it to you here. How will you remember Patrick Corbin's legacy here in D.C.? I think you start right there, the World Series, Game 7 winner. I mean, he was the winning pitcher in that final game, bringing this city its first championship in, you know, however many hundreds of years, and obviously the first in the Nationals uh, since they moved to D.C. But then I also think, you know, there are, there was some bad times, and I think that's okay, too. I mean, I, I, I don't think that we should just kind of brush that under the rug. That's part of the legacy. So, yes, he wanted to help them win the World Series, but... Unfortunately, statistically speaking, he was has been one of okay. the worst starting pitchers over the past couple of seasons. And, um, you know, I think that it's got to be twofold. But I, I think Patrick, his legacy, we'll see it live on with these young starting pitchers. So many of them talk about how much they have influenced him off uh, them off the field. So I think even though he might not be on this roster next season, I think that he is still going to play a, a lasting role for some of these young starting pitchers as their careers move forward because he's played such a role model for them. Bobby, always a pleasure to have you here on the pregame show. Go enjoy Miami, but not too much. <laughs> Thanks, Savannah. I'll do my best. <laughs>